Hi guys and welcome. Today we're, I'm just going to be working in my little butterfly journal. So I'm nearly finished this one. I'm working my way through it so it's got all the foundation in it. Um, the other day I put some flip out envelopes and um, this is the page I'm going to be working on today. So I want to um, cover, I've stuck the envelopes down as you can see. So they're a flip out and also a pocket. So we'll be decorating those and there's three of them. So two the same size, which I think is five by seven. And then we've got this little note um, envelope there too. So we'll be decorating all of those. But before I do that, I want to put a, a large pocket in here to hold a notebook. So um, as you know, with my journals, I love a lot of journaling space. So wherever I can put a little notebook or some extra pages or a journaling card, then I will. So this one's an A5 size. So I want to work on this side first of all. So I've got this beautiful paper here from 49 Market. So it's Nature Study. Um, and I'm going to be using this side. While the journal is butterfly theme, I still want to have some little different things throughout that. So I'm just going to get my trimmer and we're going to measure um, the width of the page and I'm going to because we're putting a notebook in it I want to be able to put a little bit of thickness in there so I'm going to be doing some side tabs on that one so I'm going to be basically adding another half an inch to go a quarter of an inch each side so I'm going inside just a little bit inside the page because we don't want to take it from one edge to another edge because it, it will make the journal difficult to fold. So I'll just grab my trimmer. And we'll make a cut adding half an inch on that one. I'll just cut that. End piece off. the page again because I cut the little piece off so you want to take it half an inch so first of all we'll go to the mark which makes it five and a quarter so we'll go five and three quarters and we can always trim it down you just can't add add more to it once it's cut and then we'll just get the height we want to go to so I'm not going to go right to the top um, I'm going going to come to about I, I guess an inch inch and a quarter down and then we'll put a little tab tab in there as well so remembering down the bottom we're also going to have a little folded over piece for the pocket so we will go a little bit higher than we actually want up there because we know we're going to come down a quarter of an inch so if you work on a border of a quarter inch all the way around It makes it easier when you go to score. I think my blade's getting a bit blunt. I, I did a lot of cutting yesterday. I I made some more ephemera holder journals. So um, there's another couple listed in my Etsy shop. I'll put the link below. And they've been very, very popular. So we want to go a quarter of an inch. Should be better if I score it on the scoreboard. My trimmer does have a score on there, but it's a little bit difficult to see on the quarter of an inch. So this is a better way to do it.
Now we want to just do score the three sides, so the bottom and the two sides, because the top we're actually going to put a little bit of a notch in there. And we can turn it around. It's easy to score off the edge rather than try and work it out over there. And then along the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll fold it first and work just to make sure that um, it's not too wide, that we've allowed enough or we've, you know, gone large enough for the, the fold. We might have to go... No, nope, that's fine. And you can see it's only a very small edge. And then we're just gonna um, cut out the corners, but I'm gonna miter it a bit, so angle it a bit on there and there. And that just takes the bulk out of the fold when we fold it over. And I'm just going to get my bone folder and just make that fold a little bit more crisp because we're going to glue it down. So you don't have to put an edge on on this like this um, you can just simply have a flat piece of card that one I need to angle a bit more um, flat bit of card down but then it makes the pocket quite tight when you, you're putting something in it I'm actually going to cut a little bit more off that I don't want it quite that quite that tall so I'm going to take basically another half an inch off. Yep, that's better. Now I want to put a notch, which I'm just going to eyeball the centre of. And if you're going to ink it, guys, now's the time to do it um, before you stick it down. So I'm going to use walnut stain today. So walnut stain, distress oxide, this one is. And then the folded, folded edges as well. And depending on your paper, this one doesn't need too much distressing because it's already distressed, but we're just defining the edges a little bit more on that one, as you can see. And I might do across the top of the pocket just a little bit darker and that'll just depend on what sort of background you're putting it on now I still don't like these lines here so what I'm going to do is put a piece of um, decorative cardstock or paper across there um, and I'm just going to go with this Kaiser Craft one just with a bit of script on it once again I'll mark I'm not going to take it right to the edge. I still want to feature a little bit of green under there. And then we want to go, it doesn't really matter how far we go down because we're putting the pocket over, but we definitely want it to go under where we're doing our pocket. gonna stick that so sort of you can see it sort of gets rid of the joins 
and it's just a really neutral coloring because we're really not looking to feature it the pockets the feature so you know in theory it should just blend into the background and you could do you could do torn edges on this if you wanted to you don't have to do straight edges like that and then we we'll just get a glue stick Get it on there relatively straight near the edges. And now this one. So you can see it sort of just blends, blends into everything. And you know, we're featuring the pocket, which will add a little bit some some extra things to the pocket as well in the form of ephemera. So we glue on the sides that we're sticking down. With pockets, it's always three sides. I just get into the habit, even though this one's fairly obvious because we've got the folded um, seams there, I always get into the habit of putting my thumb on the side that I'm not gluing. So it's sort of, it's like a bit of a visual, helps you remember not to glue that side. And then we stick it in our journal like that. And the glue I'm using is art glitter glue. And it dries fairly quickly, which is good so we don't have to sit here and hold it. And then that's our that's our pocket in there. So we're going to make, before we move on to the envelopes, going to make a notebook to go in that. But before I do that, I want to add a little bit just extra ephemera like you don't have to because this is such beautiful paper it's absolutely stunning but you know I've pulled out a few things to just add a little I guess to personalize it add a little bit extra in in the sense of a focal point And then just distressing a little bit more you can see how it just now blends in so i'm not adding too much here like i could put lace under it etc but this page with the the flip overs the pockets it's going to be fairly thickish anyway so we're certainly not looking to add you know layers to this i just wanted to personalize it so we might put a label on there as well so i've just got like a neutral tone label here i think it's a tracy fox uh, love junk journals you'll find her etsy shop under love junk journals and she's got some beautiful beautiful labels um, and once you purchase them you can print them as many times as you like now I may may decide later to put something you know up the top uh, maybe butterfly maybe actually I like that there let's stick that there just because it's got two vacant spaces up there now you don't always have to fill in vacant spaces but I'm sort of balancing it through the angle type of method and staying with the beautiful natural tones and just mute that down a little bit beautiful so we might do this one first so I think I'll stay with this similar paper 
on these. And I'm going to leave a very slight border. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this one like a picture, which will have some book page or something top and bottom. So I'll just cut that off to where I've marked it. You know, you could make that into a pocket. I'm not going to because we've got a pocket under here and these effectively fold over and they are a pocket in their own right. So, you know, which we will put some paper on there as well. So we don't want to make it too bulky in the sense. So I'm gonna grab some book page. So I only want a little bit hanging out top and bottom. So what I'll do, I might tear We don't want this even we sort of want to feature it so we sort of get the width Might need to take just a fraction off if you've got a tear rule I use that if you've got um, you know a Tim Holtz decal trimmer use that Now that one's got some space in it, which I don't want space. So I'm going to tear it off and I'll save it for some collage. Right, and we just want... So we want it poking out top and bottom. Just like that, we're not going to cover the whole um, cream envelope, but I am going to distress it a little bit. So let me just grab a piece of, I'll use this glue paper, but I'll fold it in half. I mean, in theory, I could have distressed it before I glued them in, but I didn't. And of course you don't have to distress them it's entirely up to you doesn't take long. Now let's just ink. Now normally you'd only ink the piece that's hanging out. Now I haven't decided which one I'm putting top and bottom yet so I'm going to ink around the whole lot which only takes a few seconds so you know you can skip that step if you want to trial it first. You can also round the corners if you wanted to. I'm not going to. You could tear the edges on this one if you if you liked that effect as well. Similar to your book page. trick of remembering how far down you had it I'm 
or you could have stuck it to that and then put the whole piece down. That's why I went a little bit wider on them so you know that they're definitely going to go under the piece. And then we just glue that one on. I love watching um, YouTube videos like this because you you get to see the creator working in their journal and what and as we talk what goes through our mind to pull pieces together because I certainly didn't have uh, much of a plan going in today only that I knew I wanted to make a pocket here um, so I selected this one because I loved the flips so if you keep them you know a little bit similar in the colorings then um, you know it all it all flows together all right so I've got a bit more of that paper let's have a look which I do and I might use the bottom piece because it's got the butterfly on it And I like the idea that you can journal on that spare piece. So I don't know whether I will be putting ephemera on this one. I'll just put the pin in my glue because art glitter glue is very it dries quite quickly and you don't want to it's such a fine tip that it comes out of you certainly don't want to clog it up in any way easy when you've got your paper marked like that to be able to cut it and you can see that that one just covers the whole lot and I will leave a slight border around so I'll just ink the edge of this one so have a look at your patterned papers and you'll find that you know when you cut them down they're their own little piece of artwork some of the times when they've got some features on it like this actually I didn't ink that one there that's why that edge is jumping out at me I could see the starkness of it against the other ones so sometimes things stand out to you sometimes you know you may notice it later when you come back through because when I'm working on a journal I do flip through it a fair bit it actually gives you inspiration and you don't have to start at the front and work your way through like you can just flick through and go okay I'm going to work on this space today it helps put in my eyes it helps pull it all together now that one I think I'm going to add some of that script and then we might put a little butterfly or something on it so keeping it fairly neutral again And probably taking it to where it's still got a border it's quite deceiving on this because there's two that look like pen marks but one's one's the actual script So sometimes you have to make your 
your marks a little bit darker so you can find them again and then I'll ink around that and once again you don't have to have a straight edge I'm staying with the straight edge you know because I've got I'm working on straight edge borders but you could tear that you could put book page here I'm just tying it in here because it's a visual thing and I might mute that down a little bit it's a little bit white to me so don't re-ink when you're muting it down like this don't re-ink if you've been inking something there will be enough on your sponge just to you know just fade it mute it because if I was to ink again you're going to get some stark marks off your your sponge and you can see that I've once again left another little border around there do have either um, another mushroom or I've got some butterflies Apologies for that. Um, you've probably missed a couple of steps. The video did cut out. So what I've done is I've cut some book page and, and glued it down, inked around the edge and still leaving a little border. I've then put a mushroom there with a label. And when I closed it up like that, there was a big gap there. So I put a butterfly over there on um, that one. Open it up. And now we're just going to make the notebook that goes in there. So the size I'm going to make the notebook is four and a half by seven. So four and a half. And I'm going to make it four pages because four pages doesn't add too much bulk. So four pages of coffee dyed paper doesn't add too much bulk. But it gives you eight journaling spaces. And then we'll just fold that out to seven. So four and a half inches by seven. This is on a A5 journal. So the size of the journal is A5. Now I'm going to staple those together with my tiny attacher. Now you're not going to see the staples. I'll put um, one in the middle and then one either side because we're going to fold, you know, something over. Um, I'll just use this piece of scrap. So it's roughly, I think, two inches from memory when I get yeah, two inches. You can make it a bit smaller if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it. So decide on the side you want. I'm just going to eyeball it and put the edges together. You can score this if you want to. Now I'm going to ink it before I glue it down. So this basically, it, it's a feature at the top. It's sort of a handle to pull it in and out of a pocket. And it hides the staples so you know it serves a few purposes and it's another decorative element in your journal as well I'm just going to make that fold a bit crisper with my bone score up and then I'm going to glue it in so we don't want to glue right across because we're going to cut Cut the excess off. You can cut it off before you glue it if you want. So push your notebook right in. And 
and then cut the excess off. And then I'm going to get a little bit of book page and um, just add a little feature in there. Go there. Because I'm going to put a word across the top. And just ink it now this book page is it's quite white so I will also mute it down a little bit the background there and then glue it down And then I've got the word limited edition. You could put notes, journal, anything you want across there in relation to words. This one's stamped off the Tim Holtz tiny, tiny text um, from Stampers Anonymous. It's a great set. I don't want to add too much to it either because you know we don't want to add bulk to our journal and then that just slips into our pocket like that so just to go through guys we've got the three envelopes they had the tabs so we put a piece of decorative paper to cover the joins where I'd stuck the envelopes down. Then we made a gusseted pocket to go over the top and um, I like the gusseted because we can put a little bit of thickness. Like you could put a thicker notepad in there if you want, but I find that four pages, which is eight journaling spots. So you can, you know, journal on that. Then you can turn it over and journal on that, that side as well. Um, is enough we've also got extra journaling space on the back of our envelopes because we put some coffee dyed paper on those and on the back of this one we just added a bit of book page and a mushroom and a label um, but remember that's a pocket too so with your pockets you got extra pockets you can fold up some coffee dyed paper and just have some extra journaling in there you can put journal cards you can put ephemera whatever you like so um, that's just one page and it's added so much journaling to our journal, journaling spots to our journal, just on the one page. It does add a little bit of thickness because we've got quite a lot of layers there, but more importantly, it makes your journal interactive. So, you know, you can have some little hidden um, journaling spots in there. So your, your words aren't necessarily out on display. So, you know, I'll go through and do some stenciling on these planar pages and and add some more ephemera throughout that which i will do videos more videos on this journal as i work through it it is my little butterfly uh, themed journal absolutely love it but there is still a lot of work to do and then at the end of it i will do a journal flip through for you guys because i love watching somebody flip through their journal because you just learn so much um you know you get all these little tricks and ideas and you know where they've put pockets or tucks or or things like that so keep an eye out for that um all the links that i've spoken about today which is your butterflies um the ephemera holder etc i will link um below as well so thanks guys thanks for stopping by i really enjoyed our time together and i look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks guys bye